God bless your family. This is Pastor Larry. As we always say, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, tonight we have an awesome topic on tonight. And it's called the church's role in a changing society. Man, listen, you don't want to miss tonight's lesson. I believe that it's going to inform you, inspire you, encourage you, and lift you. All right, listen. Uh, like share, and subscribe to our page and bring someone else into the conversation. Say, Pastor Larry, why is that? If you like us, let me know that you're there. If you share our page, you can invite someone else in to be a part and preferably this will be a source for their spiritual enlightenment as well. If you subscribe to our page, every time we're on, it will notify your device and let you know that we're there with some new content, all right? So don't, don't forget to like, Subscribe and share our page. Listen, stay tuned. We will be right back. Right, all right. Listen, welcome back. Welcome back. Man, listen, today is indeed the best day of your life. Listen, as always, God bless your family. Welcome to the place where change begins because we are changing lives that will ultimately impact the world. I want to say a God bless you to our E family. God bless you all and all of our virtual outlets. Man, I'm excited tonight to have you all here. Okay, listen, I only ask one thing that you all please. Like, share, and subscribe to our page, all right? You need to do that right now as we uh, uh, go on into, into tonight's lesson. Like, share, and subscribe to our page. Listen, we want to get as many in the chat room as we can tonight. I believe by the Spirit of God, it is going to be awesome on tonight. Pastor Larry wants to connect with you, all right? Listen, that's right, you. Why don't you shoot me an email at momentsintheword ninety nine at gmail.com. That's moments in the word 99 at gmail.com. It's too early to do this here. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Again, that's moments in the work 99 at gmail.com. Also, if you need prayer, feel free to call our prayer line at 773-785-0412. That's 773-785-0412. Or call our online number at 708-821, excuse me, 6527. That's 708-821-6527. Listen, tonight, I will let you know when, but we're going to have a call in tonight. So write this number down, 708-821-6527. That's 708-821-6527. Now, in order to call in, you must cut down your device, which you're listening on. All right? Let me be clear. I want to be clear. The device you're listening to us on, you must cut that one down so that there's no echo as we talk back and forth and communicate, all right? And so it's okay to uh, go back and listen after we're off the air, and you can hear yourself comment tonight. But you have to cut the one you're listening to, cut that one down, so that we don't disturb anyone else's listening pleasure tonight, all right? Listen, again, won't you all join us for our reading, for our reading on uh, tonight, I'm sorry, this month. We are in the book of 1 Corinthians for our reading. And, of course, you know, today is chapter number 10. I pray you all read 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. As always, what an awesome chapter. And I pray that you all read it. Uh, probably Sunday or Monday night, I will give you our next reading assignment so that you can follow along with us as we go through the word of God. All right. But today is 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. I believe it will bless your life and my life for the better. Also, I pray you had a chance to join, to join us today. For our Sunday school time, man, listen, it was great. Uh, our instructors were, were, were awesome today. Many of you all called in and, and gave comments uh, online. Thank you all so much for uh, calling in today to our conference number. Listen, Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock, we will be in prayer. Won't you join us? All right, come on some, uh, Tuesday morning and be a part of our time of prayer on Tuesday morning at a 10 o'clock hour. Call our conference line. Uh, which is 978-990-5000. All right? It's 978-990-5000. I'll say it again. 978-990-5000. Access code 355794. There's 355794. All right? Join us this Tuesday and be a part of our time of prayer. I know that it will bless your life in a supernatural way. All right, let's pray and let's dig into the word tonight. Father, thank you again so much for this time of sharing your word. Thank you, Father, for this open door, this venue, if you will. Now, God, tonight, since we're here, we pray that you bless our time together. God, bless every listener. Father, I pray your glory on every comment in the precious name of Jesus. But God, most of all, call some life to be changed as a result of tonight's word. We so bless your name and give your name maximum glory. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, before we get into the word, I want to thank all of you all, all of you all who have been a constant support. Listen, thank all of you all for being a great supporter. Many of you all have uh, 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 given offering through our, our uh, cash apps. Listen, thank you, thank you, thank you for your generous support. Now, those of you who, who, who have not given, want to consider being a part of our giving and give to our to our uh, uh, cash apps, all right? Your gifts are uh, tax deductible and it helps us do what God has called us to do. Every dime goes into the furtherance of the gospel, all right? It goes right into our church and it help, helps us do what God has called us to do. So thank all of you all for every gift, every dime, every dollar goes toward the furtherance of the kingdom. Listen, want to give a few shouts out. Want to say, hey, to Lady Sergeant, I know that you're there. I see my mother. Hey, mother, love you, girl. I see you, Minister Anderson. God bless you. Minister Karen, God bless you. Sister Deborah, God bless you as well. All right, Brother LT, I see you, man. God bless you, sir. Uh, Tommy, my man, what's happening? God bless you. Thanks for being here tonight. Who else I see? Who else? Who else? So the Arnetta, how you doing? 
God bless you. Good, happy Friday to you as well. Minister Gina, God bless your heart. Good seeing you. Pastor March, how are you, sir? And hey, Lady March, Auntie, how are you? Thank God for you all being here. And all of you all who name, maybe I haven't, haven't caught your name, but God bless you. Thank you all for being here on tonight. I appreciate all of you being here on tonight. Man, listen, I'm excited. I am so ready to get into tonight's word. We are coming out of Matthew, the 28th chapter, looking at verse number 18. Matthew 28, looking at verse number 18. Look at what it says. It says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Tonight you are going to revisit. Hey, bless you, Pastor. I see you, sir. Pastor Beard. God bless you, man. How you doing? Revisit our, our lesson, you all, entitled The Church's Role in a Changing Society. The Church's Role in a Changing Society. Listen now, on tonight, if you have questions, put them in the chat room. And uh, Lady Sutton will get those questions and make sure I get them. And preferably, preferably, we can answer every question while we're still online tonight. All right. And so in a few minutes, I'm going to have you call in and be a part of the conversation tonight. Now, I want as many of you that can to call in. When you call in, if you can't get through, but I see your number, I will call you back. All right. So make sure that the, the device you're listening on, make sure you cut that device down. All right. The device you're listening to me on, make sure that one is cut down so that it doesn't give feedback to the line. All right, let's go. Now, we again, we're talking about you all, the church's role in a changing society. And I believe in this season, it is absolutely vital as the body of Christ that we find our place, you all, in this world. I told you before that uh, I use the word church in a generic term, but, but when I say church, I really mean the entire body of Christ. What is our role? What has God commissioned us to do? You and I, that means you tonight. Tonight, I want to come in your house, in your kitchen table, in your bedroom, um, wherever you are. I want to come tonight where you are because the church is more than a building. The church is where we worship, but you and I are the church. We are the body of Christ, right? And so the, the question becomes, what is your role? What is our role overall? And how do we fit in this changing society? Because listen, it's not, you don't have to look very far to notice you all, our world is changing. Whether you like it, whether you like it or not, whether you're ready for it or not, our world is changing. Come on. How we do church is changing. The message Stay the same, but our method is changing. Come on, if you want to have a, a, a great marriage, you must change what you do. And so we don't uh, reject change; we embrace change. The question is, what is our role at the church? Because I often hear many Christians say, "Pastor, I'm not sure what to do. I don't. I'm, I, I'm not sure where where I fit in ministry." Listen. You fit somewhere in the body of Christ. God has given all of us a role. There is no such thing as a bench member Christian. A pastor, I'm too old. Listen, if you're too old to do what God has called you to do, then your wisdom, your wisdom is, is so vital. Somebody can get 20, 30, 40 years ahead if you share your wisdom. You know, over in Jude, it says for the older women to teach the younger women. And so all of us are valuable. But here's my point. As our society changes, how then do we get uh, uh, these, this next generation to embrace Christianity? How do you get your children, your grandchildren, to embrace the God that you serve? Because I know all of us want our kids to go to heaven. Here is the harsh reality. 
none of us can be good enough to get to heaven. The only way to get to heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, which means then we can't boast or brag on how good our children are, right? Your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandchildren need to make a decision to make Jesus Christ their Lord and their Savior. And so the question becomes then, how, Pastor Larry, with society offering us all these things? I mean, dear God, man, we have so much competition for the hearts and for the souls of this generation. Oh, my God. There is so much competition. Pastor, what do you mean? I mean, we have social media, you know, that most of the, uh, our adults are locked in on social media, whether it be Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, what's the other one? Oh, dear God. Twitter, thank you. Uh, what's the other one I'm on, too? And I'm on, I'm on most of them. But there, there are so many outlets that we have that occupy our time. And now because of this medium we have, you all, Everybody has a voice. Everybody is giving their opinion. Here is the problem. People are giving opinions in areas where they don't have training or adequate information. The sad part is they're passing their information down to our children. And because our children, for many of us, aren't listening to us, then they're picking up this information from, from what I call from the street even though it's social media, but it's not necessarily true. And now our children have the tendency to embrace this bad information. And now when they carry out what they see on uh, social media, now there's a, 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 a big blow up. You know, other day I saw on the news where this guy saw some stuff on, on, on social media, and he decided to go, go get a gun and just start shooting all because of what he saw on social media. I mean, dear God, everywhere people are giving their opinions and here's the bad part, our children are embracing it. Come on, our grandchildren, they're embracing it and no one's monitoring what they are watching. Therefore, they see it, they want to duplicate it. And listen, I read the other day I saw where the overwhelming percentage of our young kids are depressed. When I was coming up, I didn't know what the press was. Come on. I may have been sad about something, but we got up, kept moving, and, and, and hey, we did our thing. As the song said, pick yourself up, uh, pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and start all over again. But well, we have kids, you all, in this generation who are depressed. They are suicidal because they want to fit in into this changing society. Here's the problem. Every time they get to the place where they fit, guess what? Society changes again. And so they never really find a place where they fit in. Here's what I believe Christianity does. Christianity, because it never changes. God says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so God's, God's, God does not change. The message of the kingdom of God does not change. It's been the same since God gave it to a man to pen and write down. God's message has not changed. Yet our method needs to be conducive to the place where it will cause men and women, boys and girls, to want to come and be a part of what we serve. All right, I'm opening up the phone lines. Come on, give me a call. 708-821-6527. Come on, give me a call. 708-821-6527. If I miss your call, I'll call you back. All right? You see me pick it up. All right, come on. Call in 708-821-6527. And so, as I, I read on you all, uh, as a body of believers, you all, we must then be aware that the systems of the world are designed or have have distanced itself from the, the governing systems, you all, of the kingdom. I'll figure it again. The systems of this world are designed to distance itself from the systems that govern the kingdom of God. Pastor Larry, what do you mean? When you, okay, uh, we got a call. Let me see. Let me see. 
All right, Mother Sergeant, God bless you. How are you? All right. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, come on. What's your comment? want to address one that you said that we must teach our children at an early age because uh, I realize in this society many times we're leaving our children for other folks to raise 
you know, and we, we've gone from parenting to uh, having society parent our kids for us. And it is unfortunate that our kids are picking up all kinds of crazy stuff on social media. And so uh, I really love that part about us teaching our children at an early age how to value and how to uh, fall in love with Jesus. You know, uh, I recall as, the, uh, uh, as we were coming up, you know, we were taught church. You know, we came to church. We didn't uh, have all these gadgets going on, but we were we were involved in church. You know, we were involved in church. We were we, we were there on the front row doing service times, getting the word. You know, uh, back then we didn't have children's church. And so we were in grown folks church getting the word straight from the pastor's mouth. And so it is up to us as parents, and you are so true, uh, to make sure we as uh, parents teach our kids at an early age. Don't wait for them to go to school and learn something. You tell them. You know, I know with our kids, dear God, with my kids, by the time they got to school, there was some things they already knew that uh, by the time they were taught in school, but dear God, they were already up, you know, far advanced uh, in that area by the time our kids even got to school and learned certain things. And so uh, thank you so much for calling in, Mother. I, pre I appreciate it, dear. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye now. And that is so true, y'all. That is so true. As people of God, we have to be willing to teach our kids uh, what the Word of God says. Because if we don't teach them, how will they know if we don't teach them? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm calling. This preacher back. He, preacher, what's going on? All right. Cut me down, Pastor. How you doing, sir? Bless you, man. How you feel? All right. You, you, you called in tonight. But, brother, you are on right now, preacher. Yo, this is. This, bless your heart. <laughs> Yeah, here you go. Today, I did a homeborn service for a young man, 50 years old. And there was a lot of young people that was there today because, you know, 50 is kind of young for a lot of people. And they'll say, did you know that the word healed did not scare them at all today? I believe it. And because you say that this our social media was going on, everyone writes the good things about God blessed me and God gave me this. God is work this out. I don't know. Are we really teaching our young people to understand that besides heaven, there's a hell? Yes, sir. And it seems like they're not uh, scared of, or they're really to uh, the, 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 uh, the roulette wheel to go ahead and take a chance, you know, that, that because all the good things they say how heaven is and how good God is, right. that they can assume that they're going to go to heaven, all of that. No, sir. No, sir. So I was just, you know, I'm wondering that, that, you know, we were growing up, we were scared, you know, we were taught it was a bad place. Right, exactly. And it seems like now today that they're not, you know, that uh, they're not upset about being, you know, going to hell or if they hell to play for all the people that party at them would go. Well, hell is true. And they understand that one day he's coming back again and we're going to have to uh, be accountable for everything we did on this earth. That's right. That's right. And, 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 and I had to say, brother, I'm going to keep it real with you know, for a long time. Man, it was like picking cotton on a wet, rainy day. <laughs> Man, it was soaked and they couldn't get a grip on it. You know what I mean? Right. They couldn't get a grip on them because they, they were just like, they just had fear of hell. Right. So I think that's what we have to teach one of our young people in one society about besides heaven, there's a hell. And God will judge us for how we live. But it's a great show, man. I'm glad I tuned in. You're looking great, man. And, Bless you, Doc. Uh, I'm glad we're still rocking the same hairstyle. And uh, <laughs> I'm still able, and I know he will, regain all of his people. Yes, sir. Bless you, Pastor. Thank you so much, man. All right, now. Bless you. Appreciate it. All right, sir. Uh, that was the infamous Pastor Felix Beard of New Joy. But he's so right. You know, in, in, in this society, people, um, I mean, are just not afraid. You know, when I, I was coming up, they told us, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. And guess what? I believed it. I believed it. 
Now, there, there were some things that uh, we were taught that, you know, I didn't really buy into. And now, you know, as I got older, I realized. But anyway, we uh, have to dig into this word to find out what is God's position on our lives for this uh, 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 this season. Let me see who I got here on the line. All right. Pastor Marsh, God bless you, sir. Pastor Marks, you on you're on. Oh, good evening, Pastor. Bless your heart. God bless you, sir. Yeah, well, some of the things with Pastor. How many people take the necessary time to have prayer meeting in their home? As prayers going in the home as a result of their love for God, as a result of their fellowship and relationship with God. Teaching our children, teaching our children not only to look, fall in love with God, but to respect God, the awesomeness of God. And God uh, helps us get through challenges. And every challenge we get through, it's a reminder to, not only to us, but to our children that let them know the power of God and how our relationship with God, God, keeps us covered uh, so that if the Bible declares that we should train a child in the way. Now, when he's young, now, if we don't change or um, train that child when he's young, that child will talk to us and when he's young. Ooh, he'll talk no. back to us. Yes, that sir. child will disagree with us. That child will disobey every rule. Once he grows up, disobey every rule. And so our job is to teach him the fear of God. In fact, the Bible says, when you sit down at the table, talk to them and mm. teach them about God in right. the morning, in the evening, at night before they go to bed, so that they'll understand it is the grace of God, absolute grace of God, that allows them and gives them the opportunity to go to bed, have a rest, wake up in the morning. It's God's grace. Yes, sir. And we have to teach them the fear of God. And so once they see our relationship with God, our dependency on God, uh, and it will help them when times come. Pastor Larry, you're doing a great job, absolute great job, and may God forever bless you. Bless you. Bless you, Pastor. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. All right, right now. Listen, thank you, Pastor March, who is absolutely right. Listen, you all, God told, God told Abraham, he says, when you walk by the way, when you're sitting down, teach them, teach them. I think what's happening is in this generation, we've gotten so busy, so caught up in doing what it is we want to do. Uh, some time ago, somebody did a movie called uh, Stella, got a groove back. And I think that movie turned the whole tide because now people are, I mean, everywhere are looking for their groove. You know, where do I fit? What about me? What about me? How about my life? Do I have a life? Here's the problem. When we put ourselves first, we miss a great opportunity to invest in our kids. You know, one of the things I like about uh, uh, our mother was that uh, she invested time with us. She spent time with us teaching us the word of God. Now, did we like it all the time? No. I'm going to tell the truth. We didn't. You know, sometimes mama called a prayer meeting. We like, well, God, dog, we prayed last night. But she had us praying again the next night to the point to where it, it caused us to develop a relationship with God. And this is what's missing you all in this society. We think that, you know, our kids are too young to develop a relationship with God at an early age. I mean, dear God, there, there's some kids who get saved at five. I think my mother got saved at, at, at seven. You know, I've heard some folks who got saved, you know, as early as three years old. How, how, however you meet God on your level, it's never too early and it's never too late. The question is, do we, are we trying to develop a relationship with God? And here you all is why it's important. Because, I mean, when I see today how kids are just shooting in the street, I mean, on every level, we see kids shooting down folks in the street. I mean, dear God, uh, in droves, they're killing each other in the street. It's only because 
they are not being trained properly. All right, we got to call us. Hey, uh, Sister Michelle, bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, I just wanted to call in and say everything. I enjoyed it. Everything everyone was saying. So God bless you all. But when I was raising my children, I thought back how I know my parents used to always say, um, do what I do. Do what I do. Don't do what I do, do as I say do. Uh -huh. But with my children, see, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. But when I was saved, and my children, I told them, do as I do and do as I say do. Come on. I would live my life in front of them. It was no different every day than it was on Sunday. So uh, I, they did what I did, and they saw when I prayed, you mm -hmm. know, and when they were little, I would put them outside of my door with crayons and stuff. They heard me, I have to stay right there. You come in, you stay in there, and you're doing it again. I know that's right. <laughs> and, uh, I would hear my son be begging my daughter not to come in, but she, cause she says, you come in, you have to stay in, don't go in. But she would come in, and she would lay on my back while I pray and fall asleep. I reach back and grab and point in front of me in bed. But that child that saw how I lived and how I prayed and I made sure when they was in the service, they could slip away when I was in a choir. I went down and south and brought them in the front. You know, she received the Holy Ghost at nine. And Come on, uh, my son, before he died, I know that he made it in because I constantly taught them that if mama's not around, you call on Jesus. I know that's right. So I know that he found his way, that he knew his way. Because I wasn't there when it happened. Right. But I'm confident that he knew how to call on Jesus. Yeah. So, you know, we have to put it in our children, you know. And I did. I talked to them to, I had them be choking on my food because I constantly talked to them about God and what they need to do. If I'm not around, what they should do and how they should pray. And they saw, we went through a lot of different things. And they saw how God worked each and every one of them out. Right. You know, and I made sure that God got the glory. I didn't do this. Nobody didn't do this for us. Right. But God did this. Right. So, amen. All right. Thank you. I'm going to keep up no more That's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling in. Bless, bless you. And that is so true. Listen, oh my God, that is so true. Listen, I often say uh, to our members, uh, our partners, that you can't live one way at home and then live a separate way at church. You can't come and shout on Sunday and then have them see do all kinds of crazy things during the week because we're sending mixed signals. Now, does it mean you're perfect? Absolutely not. We all make mistakes, we are human, uh, but it is our job to make sure our children know what we stand for. I would tell somebody today that uh, my kids, dear God, uh, we started our ministry 22 years ago, and back then our kids were younger. And oh dear God, every day I would get off. Well, on Wednesdays when I got off work, we would come home, get the equipment, go to church, set it up, have church, break it down, take it back home. On Sunday, get up early in the morning, get the equipment, go to church, set it up, have service, break it down, take it back. I mean, this was years. We did this over and over again. Here's my point. Our children understood that this is who we are and this is what we do. You know, we didn't give our children uh, options. Do you want to go to church? No, you're going to church because I now I knew that if they got offended and got upset, I understood that, but I didn't care. And here's why. Because I understand I would rather my kids get angry and go to church and develop a relationship with Jesus then I let them do what they wanted to do, die, and then go to hell. And then when I stand before God, God will hold me accountable for not sharing my faith with our children. And this is real. We can't be so concerned in your in this in, in this uh, season of being politically correct. You know, we can't force our religion down their throat. It's not forcing it. See, watch this. I realize. People can bring you all kinds of junk. They'll bring it to you. And they'll tell you whatever they want to say to you. And they'll say it to you however they want to say it. There is no filter. 
But the moment you mention Jesus, they're going to say, oh, I don't want to hear that, that, uh, that Jesus stuff. And they push away. Here's why. Because we let them slide by so long until now our kids are rejecting Jesus. And here's the bad part. They're going to hell. Yes, Pastor Bitt was so right. They are going to go to hell without Jesus on their side. Listen, I don't care how safe. Listen, my mother been saved a long time. She can't pray me out of hell if I was not saved. If I were not saved, she could not pray me out of hell. The only way I can get to heaven is if I make a decision to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I see Mother Tarkin says, when you make a wrong decision, let your children know that you were wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, I know it, that, that, that's the greatest thing to do. Listen, I'm right here, I missed it. Tell that child, listen, I missed right, right here, I was wrong. I know one of the things I would do to my children. Hey, Apostle, listen, Apostle Terry, call in, will you? 708-821-6527. 708-821-6527. That's Apostle Terry. I see, him on, I see him on the line. One of the things I did is I make sure I would apologize to my children, especially if I were if I was wrong. I would. Why? Because I wanted my kids to know that if I were wrong or did something wrong, that they could always expect daddy to call them or, or, or tell them, listen, I apologize. I was wrong. I would love on them. I would hug on them. But when they were wrong, now, my kids, I didn't I didn't beat them all the time. I'll tell you straight up, I didn't always get a belt, a belt to them. Many times I would talk to them. And my kids understood that because of my love for them and because of how I felt about them, that if I would come to you and tell you, listen, that was wrong. You should not have done that. They would understand. You know, listen, daddy love you. I don't want to beat you. I don't want to jump on you. Listen. This will get you to go to jail. This will get you in trouble. This will get you. In, and I would tell them. I would let them know. This is what happened when you act a fool. Why don't you hold on and see who we got here. Hey, God bless you. It's Pastor Larry. Hey, God bless you, sir. How are you? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, thanks for calling. Our topic of today is is uh, the church's role in a changing society. And this is our, our topic on tonight. The church's role... I'm sorry? No, go ahead. No, uh, our, our topic tonight is the church's role in a changing society. And uh, we're on now the role of the parents. What is, our, what is our responsibility as parents? What should we be doing to make sure our children are getting the best chance to get to know the God that we serve. I, I think just that piece where you were um, just sharing about, you know, where uh, I missed the, missed the mark. Uh, so many of us, you know, when we're with our children and, and upset at them, we're not necessarily upset at what they did. We're upset because we saw ourselves do it and we don't want them to get caught up in the same thing. Ooh, come on, by, by just sharing with them and saying, look, I've been there. This is what happened to me because we are quick to say I've been there, but not express or explain. Um, because I think that those are the um, path, the footsteps along the path that make the journey easier for the child when the child knows you've been where they're going. Yes, sir. And, and they can accept your your wisdom easier to still with our own children. They, they kind of go their own way and they have to find out when they get older, we weren't crazy as, as parents. But until then, we can we can make things a lot better by just confessing where we have fallen short. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I like that because when they when if if we can explain to them how we missed it and how we got where we are, and then they mm -hmm. see that and we we make sure that they know this is a path you don't want to take, you know. And Absolutely. while it, it 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 may be fun right right now, but there's a, a thing called a consequence that you pay for down the road. That uh, isn't necessarily as much fun. Mm -hmm. It's that uh, that uh, why the, I think uh, BB and CC had a song out that says the joy of sinning only lasts a season, and a season to me ain't worth the while. Oh, come on now, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, 
something, but you don't learn that until you go through it. Once you start going through things, that's what that's where your growth comes from is learning when you can discern you don't want to do that because you know this will come from that. Right. You know, and that's when you know you're growing up. That's right. And I, I think Apostle, uh in this season, some of these things we don't share with our, our children, you know, and, and, and maybe it's due to being ashamed. And while I understand shame, we can rephrase it, rewrap it to make sure that they have a, a great understanding of this is why I got in trouble. You know, I know with, with uh, my sons, I thought, listen, this is why I'm where I am because of this. You know, had I made a better decision right here, life will be absolutely different today had I made this better choice back here. But because I didn't, this is why I'm I. I am where I am today. And, and, and you know what? And I, and Apostle, I believe if we told our kids this, what, especially when they're young, that it would help them make better choices, you know, better choices. Now, does God bring us out? Yes, he will. But he brings us out, but we have scars to go with it. And I think this is the part many times our kids don't see is that they don't see our scars, you know. Yeah. They, they don't see us crying and, you know, all the backlash we get as a result of a bad decision. Yet, there's some things because of what God says, some things we will have to go through as a result of it. Yeah. But I believe that's also the reason why a lot of times you will we'll hear God say, no, not now, but not now doesn't mean not ever. Yes. Um, but it's because I believe that God knows the pain our choices and decisions will make if we make them at the wrong time. And so he has decided, um, however he does in his wisdom, to tell us that this is not the time, this is not the place or the season. And we get a little upset, but God knows what it's going to cost on the other end and what we will have to bear to go through that particular subject matter or that struggle, that suffering, that thing that we want but don't need. You yeah. know, and it's it's something to be in a place where you just start to learn to trust God and that if he says no, it's because he knows what's best for us. And the scripture says he knows what we have need of before we even ask. That's right. So, uh, and many times we're only asking so we can have it for what we want you right. know, instead of what we need. Exactly. You know? But right. I, I think that what you're saying is, is really profitable and it's a uh, solid wisdom, too. Be able as a parent to share with your child. I'm not talking about making your child your best friend because that's not who we are. Come on, sir. Our job is to train that's our right. children up so that, you know, when they get older, they won't depart from the truth. I think today's society has taught our children uh, to be friends with their parent or parents. And that might be one of the, the worst problems um, because you have that a lot with single mothers who are raising their sons and daughters alone and they become friends rather than a parent right and and there's a there's a deception there because the deception is that you you can be friends to your child one moment and discipline them the next you can't no sir you have to choose one above the other if you to be a true parent you know if you're gonna and and um you know that discipline don't mean like we got you know where you got extension cords and all of that heavy, that heavy stuff. There's different means by which you do it. When you can no longer talk to them, you need to find a way to get to them. That's right. You know. That's right. That's right. Apostle, that was great wisdom, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate you calling in. Well, I appreciate you inviting me. God bless you. All right. Bless you, sir. Appreciate you. Right. Bye now. Anderson, that was powerful. That was the uh, uh, eight. Oh. Eight, 18 year, 18 year NBA champ, uh, 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 ball player, Apostle Terry Cummins. God bless you. That's, that's my brother, for real. God bless him, and God, I pray God bless him and his ministry he's doing down there in Atlanta. Listen, it is vitally important, family, that we teach our children. You know, now I, I saw someone put in the chat room and said our, our children are are not a mistake. No child is a mistake. Anything God allow you to have is never a mistake. Don't ever allow anyone to make you believe or think that your child is a mistake. No, because God is the giver of life. And so there is no child that we can say this child is a mistake because all of us got here some kind of way. And it is by divine providence of God that God allowed us to get here. When I read scripture, I see where there are many people born 
uh, out of wedlock in the, in the Bible. Yet God took their lives and God used their lives for his glory. But Apostle said something that I thought was real powerful, that many times we try to be our kids' friends. That can happen. I know when uh, my kids were growing up, I had one of my sons, I won't say who it was, <laughs> but he said, he said, Daddy, do you respect me uh, Respect me as a man? And I said, I have one question. Who feeds you? He said, you? Who house are you living in? He said, yours? Who gives you money? He said, you do? I said, so right now, you aren't a man. While I respect you growing up, at this juncture, you are not a man. You are still my son. And while I will deal with you on a different level because you're growing up, I'll be your dad. I will never, ever be your friend. I'll always be your father. Even to this day, you know, I still, I, 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 I won't, won't use the word parent my kids. Now I coach them because thank God they are all grown now. And so I move from parenting to coaching. In other words, when they have issues, I step in when they invite me in. And my kids invite me in, in the conversation, I jump in, you know. And now if I see them going over a bridge, I'm jumping in. Say, listen, over there is a waterfall. You're going to die. And so I jump in and at least let them know God's perspective on what it is that they're doing. I love on them. You know, I don't come at them hard. I, I come at them with love. I think sometimes uh, we go through the old school discipline when we beat them. You know, we can be a picked up that mentality from slavery. That the way to fix them is to beat them, beat them, beat them. I heard some a preacher say this one time. He says he told his he told his daughter that if you didn't, I'm sorry. He said that if you would listen to me, you would you wouldn't have to feel the wrath of my hand. And I thought, how profound was that? That if you and I would simply listen to God, we wouldn't have to feel the wrath of His hand. And this is what we, we must all tell our children. Listen, if you listen, some things you wouldn't have to go through. By listening, I wouldn't have to holler at you if you were listening. Just listen to me, right? But this is what happens when you train up the child. And it is, however, so unfortunate that in this season, these, these alphas, this uh, alpha generation, I mean, they're, they're stone wild. I was telling Lady Starton the other day, I was on a, a, a social media outlet, and I mean, dear God, they were they were five year old kids and nine year old kids and fifteen year old kids, girls, little young girls. I mean, they were twisting and dropping and shaking their little booties. I'm like, you ain't got enough booty to shake. I'm not sure if I can say booty on social media, so I won't say booty again. But they were out there. I mean, they were out there talking, and I mean, they made they made twerking like a trophy. That the more I can shake my backside, folk will love me, appreciate me. Listen, there is nothing glamorous about how well you shake your backside. Nothing about that is glamorous. But social media has made it appear as though if I am going to catch a man or if I am going to be accepted, the only way you can like me is if I shake my rear end in front of your face. How demeaning, how degrading is that? Here's the problem. It does not stop there. Because if I can shake my backside on social media in front of a million of people who don't know me, what would I do for a dollar? Ooh, let that one sink in. What will our girls do for a dollar to make money? When I was growing up, and you all might, might know, know this song, somebody pin a song that says, Shake your money maker. Now, what was the undertone suggesting here? Was to shake your your um, your breast and your backside to make to, to make it so appealing that if anybody saw it, you could pay them to see you shake your backside. Here's the problem with that. Now we can see it for free. All we got to do is go on your page, and there you are, dropping it like it's hot. Go on your page, 
and there you are, half naked. There you are. I mean, dear God, I recall, I was telling Lady Carol today, I said, I recall the day, I'm sorry, on last night, we watched a, a program, and there were these two people who were, I mean, it gave the illusion that, 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 that they were in the bed making out. And I told her, I said, I said, where are the days of, of I love Lucy? I can't figure out how her, how Lucy and Ricky Ricardo ever made a baby. Can't figure it out because they were never in the same bed. But now they put you on TV and there are no filters. Every implication of what they're doing is right there. I mean, on primetime television. And so they wonder then, how come our world is being perverted? What they're doing, you all, is sending our kids a subliminal message that not only is it okay to have sex on television, but it's also okay to act like you're having sex on social media. And so I see our young boys, I see our young girls taking, and they're almost, well, we call it grinding back in the day. Somebody wrote a song and said, ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. I know y'all know this song. Don't look at me funny. I know you know it. But watch this. The implication there was it's okay to do it. And now we're on social media. And these boys are bumping and grinding on, on social media. Our daughters are bumping and grinding on social media. Come on. What's next? What's the limit? How far do we allow our kids to go? Now, I understand everybody wants to fit in. I'm not saying don't fit in, but when it comes to lowering our standard just to fit in, how much is enough? When should the church get involved? When should we tell them? You know, I recall coming up, uh, when I was coming up, they didn't deal with sex in church. They said, just don't do it. They told us if you kiss a girl, you get her pregnant. And so we didn't kiss them. But we still engage in sex. Here's my point. Until we learn to tell them straight. But my kids, I told my kids about sex straight out. Again, by the time our kids got to school, they knew what sex was. But I would ask my girls, are we cool? When they were young. Are, are you still daddy's baby? Come on, ask my boys, are y'all cool? You see, I think we have made it a taboo in the house to, talk, to, to deal with sex. Sex in itself is not bad. Sex was God's idea. All right? God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. That was a God idea. Not man's idea, but men have taken God's idea and perverted God's idea. And now our children don't know the difference between what's good and what's bad. Because if everybody's doing it, come on, if everybody's doing it, and they and, and because it's on social media, they think it's okay. Here's the problem. It goes beyond what they do on social media. Our, our little girls end up in sex trafficking. Come on, they, they end up on the streets at the mercy of some people. They end up doing all kinds of damnable things. And guess what? Now, we bring in the church to pray them off to get them delivered, when in fact, we could have got them delivered while they were young. Come on, we could have prayed that devil off our children while they were young, and we told them what the word of God says and how God expects us to live. Hear me, parent, your child is not too young to understand and to know what God expects from their lives. My parents taught us. Well, my parent taught us what God expects from our life. She told us, be different. It's okay to be different. Now, we got humiliated. They called us holy rollers. They said, here come church boy. But guess what? If they die, they're going to hell. Guess what? When I leave here, guess where I'm going? To be with Jesus. And so we were taught while we were young. I told my children when they were young, I saw my kids doing their things. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. This is what God expects of you. Now, daddy wasn't perfect. 
here are my issues where I miss God. Well, listen, I messed up. And I'm where I am today because of what, because of my mistakes. Messed up lives, wronged some people. I, I think to apologize. God made it right. But if we aren't bold enough to tell our kids what's wrong, we become a partaker of their mistake. You can't be so, well, I don't want to offend my kids. What's better, offend them or let them go to hell? That's the reality. Offend my child or let them grow up without a God on their side. And so you and I then must take bold steps. Now, I know society says, you know, let them grow up and make their own decision. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says train up a child in the way they should go. It means our job is to instill godly values in our children. Our job is to help them develop a relationship with God. Our job is to help them uh, find out what God wants, what's going to be best for their lives. I want to say in Proverbs it says that we can't take an arrow and shoot it or bend that bow once it gets big. In other words, you can't just have a grown child. And psychiatrists say that between the age of uh, 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 9 and 15, that child has made a decision on which way they're going to live their life. Consider this. At 9 years old, that child don't know enough to lead nothing. But between 9 and 15, in that age group, that age bracket, a child had decided already on which direction they're going to go with their lives. Watch this now, whether it be good and bad. But here is the problem. Can you, as a parent, hear me, can we as parents live with the consequences of what our kids do? That's crucial. Are we willing to live with the consequences of what our children do? Now, I tell my kids, once I've trained you, I've done my job. I've given you the word. I've done my job. I tried to live a life before you as best I could. I've done my job. The Bible says that if they stray away, they'll come back. Hear me. But church, you all, has a great responsibility to, 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 uh, uh, in this season. It is our responsibility to make sure we train our children, train them up in the way that they should go. I encourage you, parents, mothers, fathers, I encourage you, teach your children about Jesus. Now, I'm going to deal with this more on, on Monday. I guess God wants, wants, wants us to be here for a while. Thank you all for calling in. I bless all of you all called call in. You all made our show on tonight. Listen, I'm going to deal with this again. Pick it back up right here on Monday night because until we understand our role as the church, as the ecclesia, and the called out ones, until we understand our role as children of God, we are telling those around us to live life without God. And that is not the will of God for our life in this season. Woo, y'all listen, my time is all gone. Listen, but y'all blessed tonight. Come on. If, if you're blessed tonight, come on, put some hearts in the uh some hearts or likes. In the chat, if you are blessed tonight, come on. I pray you all tonight were blessed by tonight's conversation. Listen, we're going to dig right back in this on Monday, all right? So make sure you get here early and be a part of the conversation. Don't forget, write this number down, 708-821-6527. That's 708-821-6527. And let's continue our conversation on Monday night right here at 7 o'clock. What is the church's role in a changing society? Listen, y'all, I love, I, I love y'all so much. Let Pastor Larry hear from you. Will you please? I want to hear from you. Won't you shoot me an email? Even tonight, let me know if you are blessed tonight by the word. All right? Uh, moments in the word. That's moments with an S. Moments in the word 99 at gmail.com. If you have a question about tonight's lesson, Shoot me an email tonight, all right, at momentsintheword99 
at gmail.com. It's on your screen. Do a screenshot. Come on. All right. Make sure you get the information and ask the question. All right. We'll answer it here and online Monday night at seven o'clock. If the Lord said the same, and I believe that he is. All right. Listen, you need prayer. Call our prayer line. 708-721-6527. That's 708-821-6527. Or 773-785-0412. That's 773-785-0412. All right, y'all. We got to get out of here. Remember, as we always say, we will have the God kind of faith. We call those things that be not as though they were. And we know that God has us in the palm of his hand. Come on. Big hugs, y'all. Big hugs. Come on. Make some noise. Mm -mm. Woo! That's sore. <laughs> Have my COVID shot. Oh, Lord. Come on. Big hugs. Come on. Big hugs. I love y'all. God bless you. And guess what? You know it. We are out. <laughs>